بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا طاهرا مباركا فيه وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من لدنك علما نافعا يا أرحم الراحمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قومي أما بعد O praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, continuing with the series of the history of the four khulafa, and we mentioned last week and we finished with the great calamity that took place in the Muslim ummah which was the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was the beginning of a new time, a beginning of a new era. And when any calamity befalls, especially if it's death, you find that many people have different reactions. And many people have different ways in which they deal with the calamity of death especially when it's someone who is very close and especially when it's someone who is very dear to the person or to the one who has passed away you find a lot of people they deal with it in many different manners and when it comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there was not a Sahabi there was not a companion except that their hearts were attached to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and except that they loved him more than they loved their families, more than they loved themselves. They witnessed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they dealt with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they felt the mercy, the compassion, the love that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had for his companions. They, they lived around him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in times of peace and in times of war, in times of hardship, in times of ease. They lived around the Prophet ﷺ in all of these times and they saw the perfect manners and the perfect personality that the Prophet ﷺ he had and the great state of love that he had for his Sahaba and the great state of love that he had ﷺ for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the deen and for the spreading of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he will give up anything that he has just looking at the way he lived sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you understand that his focus in this dunya was to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to gain and to get as many people as he can to follow the guidance that will reach them to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they lived with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They ate with him. They went to war with him. They spoke with him. They told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their problems. They came to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they were in times of hardship. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not only a Khalifa, was not only someone who ruled the Muslims at that time in a way that it was just about Islamic rulings, or was just about jihad, or was just about war. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was much more than that to the Sahaba. He was a friend to them. He was a companion to them. He was someone that they could approach and speak to him وسلم, in any matter that they had. They could confine with him وسلم, trusting that he would only want the best that is for them. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, during his lifetime with the Sahaba they attached, they, they, they became so attached to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam that when it came the time in which he passed away and his pure soul was raised and he died sallallahu alayhi wasallam the sahaba, the reaction of them, even the very close sahaba, their reaction was different. Each sahabi reacted in a different manner. 
that shows you more of the personality of the Sahabi in the way that they reacted. We mentioned last week that Umar radiallahu anhu, that when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed away and before he died, he gazed at Aisha and he said, Al-Rafiq al-A'la ila Al-Rafiq al-A'la to the Most High Companion and his breath, his last breath came out and Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that I have never smelled a smell that was more beautiful than the last breath of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Umar and Al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba radiallahu anhuma, when they entered upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was covered and they looked, Umar looked at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said that how harsh and how hard is the state of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though he was dead, he had passed away. But his mind didn't want to accept, his heart didn't want to accept that he had died. So as they are walking out, Al-Mughira, he looks at Umar and he says, Oh Umar, the Prophet ﷺ has passed away. The Prophet ﷺ has died. Umar radiallahu looks at Al-Mughira, he says, No, kathabt. He says, No, you are lying. You are someone who is looking to spread the rumor. And then Umar radiallahu anhu even came up with excuses to say or to better understand the reason why he didn't want to accept the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said it was or it is a meeting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised him as he promised Musa and he met with Musa and that he will come back and that he will expose the munafiqeen and that he will get rid of the munafiqeen. And Umar, he said that the Prophet وسلم, he was going to be, we are all in their mind, in the mind of Umar, that the Prophet وسلم, will outlive all of them. And he will live beyond the lives of the Sahaba that were around him at that time. So the rumor now is coming out of the household of the Prophet وسلم, that he has died and that he has passed away. Ibn Rajab radiallahu anhu, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the famous scholars, he says, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, the Muslims became confused. Ittarab al-Muslimun. They became confused. They were shaken by that which had taken place. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ دُهِشَ فَخُولَتْ Some of them, they lost their minds. They didn't know what was happening. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أُقْعِدَ فَلَمْ يَطْقِ الْقِيَامِ some of them came to their knees, sat down, and they weren't able to stand up anymore. Some of them, their tongues became silent, and they weren't able to speak. And some of them, they refused to accept the news of his death altogether. Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi, one of the famous scholars of Islam, he says, and the people were shaken. And the death of the Prophet sallallahu الظهر. It was the an expression that is used in Arabic. It was the breaking of the back of the Muslims. It was that harsh and that hard the news. It was like the breaking of the back. الْعُمَرِ And the calamity of the time, of the lifetime. فَأَمَّا عَلِيٌّ فَاسْتَخْفَى فِي بَيْتِ فَاطِمَةٌ As for Ali, he hid in the house of Fatima. He didn't want to come out, he hid in the house of Fatima. وَأَمَّا عُثْمَانٌ فَسَكَتْ As for Uthman, he went silent. He didn't speak, he didn't say anything, he didn't address anyone. وَأَمَّا عُمَرَ فَأَهْجَرَ وَقَالَ مَا مَاتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ As for Umar, he denied. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not died. وَإِنَّمَا وَعَدَهُ رَبُّهُ كَمَا وَعَدَ مُوسَى But he was promised by his Lord as Musa was promised by his Lord, وَلَيَرْجِعَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And the Prophet ﷺ is going to come back. When the news reached Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and he was on the outskirts of Medina, a messenger went to Abu Bakr to give him the news that the Prophet ﷺ has passed away. As soon as the writer came to Abu Bakr, 
Before he even said anything, he said to the writer, Did the Prophet ﷺ, has the Prophet ﷺ died? He knew that the only reason they're going to come to call him is because of this incident, this calamity has taken place. So he rode, he came riding to the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. He entered the house of Aisha and he looked towards the Prophet ﷺ while he was covered in a piece of cloth. And then he went down to the Prophet وسلم, he covered his face and then he came to the Prophet وسلم, and he started to kiss him on his forehead and he started to cry. And then, as we mentioned last week, he said the words to the Prophet And then he said, Bi abi wa ummi anta ya Rasulullah. He said, By my mother and my father are Rasulullah. Wallahi la yajma'u Allahu alayka mawtatayn. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not combine upon you or will not put upon you two deaths. As for the death that is written upon you, you have died. And then Umar, and then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he went out to the masjid. And Umar is speaking. Umar is saying the Prophet has not died. Anyone who says that the Prophet has died, then he has to face me. The Prophet ﷺ is going to come back. The Prophet ﷺ has not passed away. So Abu Bakr, he comes out, he tells Umar, Ijlis. He tells Umar, sit down. And Umar continues to speak. He tells Umar, sit down. And Umar, he is speaking. So Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, he stands up. And he starts to speak after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says the famous saying that it will be written and will be said until the day of judgment. After praising Allah, he said, Amma ba'd. man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. He says, Whoever worshipped Muhammad, Muhammad has passed away, has died. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ And whoever worships Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ And whoever worships Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all living and never dies. The all living and never dies. And then he recited the verses that are recited until the day of judgment, that all the Sahaba already knew and had already heard but because of the greatness of the calamity it didn't come to their mind he recited the verse ma muhammadun illa rasulun qad khalat min qablihi ar-rusul wa ma muhammadun illa rasulun qad khalat min qablihi ar-rusul afa in mata aw qutila qalabtum ala a'qabikum wa man yanqalib ala aqibayhi falan yadurru Allah shay'a wa sayajzi Allah ash-shakirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he reveals in the Qur'an. And you find or you feel that this revelation, it was as if it was intended for Abu Bakr to recite it at this time. It's as if it was intended for Abu Bakr to recite it at this time. He says, and Muhammad is but a prophet or messenger. He's a prophet, a messenger. If he was to die or to be killed, انقلبتم على أعقابكم is will fall over and whoever falls over he will not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way in any form وسيجزي الله الشاكرين and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward those who are thankful as soon as the people heard that they began to cry they realized the emotions settled they realized that the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is true Umar, he says, For Allah, ma in samirtu Abu Bakr in talaha, fahawitu ila al ardi ma tahmiluni qadamai. He says, As soon as I heard Abu Bakr recite the verses, I fell to the floor, my feet were not able to hold me up. And the reality came that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away. Imam al Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in the tafsir of this ayah, he says, هذه الآية أدل دليل على شجاعة الصديق وجرأته. He says, this verse that he recited is the greatest sign of the bravery and the knowledge and the courage of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه. And knowledge, patience and courage, bravery, they come, the definition of them is for the heart to be firm at the time of calamity. 
at the time of calamity, the patience, the courage, the bravery, that's when they come into play. As the Prophet wasallam, he says that the brave one, the strong one, is not the one who is able to wrestle the people. He's not the one who is able to lift the most weights. But the strong, the brave, the courage one is the one that controls himself at the time of anger. The one that controls themselves at the time of a calamity. The one who is patient. The one who is able to accept that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. As the Prophet sallallahu he says, when he, the woman was crying, and she came back to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Patience, understanding, knowledge, is being patient when the calamity first happens. Straight away the person is patient. And there is no calamity greater than the death of the Prophet ﷺ. So this is where the courage of Umar, of Abu Bakr, was shown the most in the character of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So when all of this confusion was going around amongst the Sahaba, even the ones like Umar, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he controlled the situation simply by reciting verses from the Quran and reminding the Sahaba that it is not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you worship. It is not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who recited the Qur'an from his own words. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you worshipped. And it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who revealed the Qur'an. And it's in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he took them back and the tawheed, the belief of the Sahaba was still fresh. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was able to bring them and bring them back to the understanding of Iman, the understanding of belief. The understanding of Tawheed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reminded them of similar verses like this that reminded the Sahaba that were revealed years before the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another narration, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he says, Inna deen Allah qa'im. says the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who upstand, is standing. وَإِنَّ كَلِمَةَ اللَّهِ تَامَّةً And the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ نَاصِرٌ مَنْ نَصَرَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to those who give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمُعِزُّ الدِّينَ And he will honor his deen. وَإِنَّ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ بَيْنَ أَظْهُرِنَا And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is between us. وَهُوَ النُّورُ وَالشِّفَاءُ It is the guidance, the nur, the light. And it is the cure for the people. وَبِهِ هَدَ اللَّهُ مُحَمَّدًا صلى الله عليه وسلم. And through the Qur'an, the guidance came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَفِيهِ حَلَالُ اللَّهِ وَحَرَامُ And in it is the halal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. And in it is the haram. And then Aisha رضي الله عنها, she says that by Allah it was if the people did not know that this verse that he recited existed until Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he recited it and the people came back and they understood and they realized that the calamity is true and that the news is true and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has passed away. Has passed away sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, what we are going to speak about is an also or is also a great incident that took place, which is the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and how his Khilafah was established, and how he received the Khilafah and became the first Khalifa of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu became the first Khalifa after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the meaning of Khalifa is the one that comes after someone. That's why Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was the only Khalifa who was given the title Khalifa to Rasulullah. The Khalifa of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? 
because he was the only one who was given Khilafah directly after the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was the one who was given the honor of holding the title of Khalifa Rasulillah, the Khalifa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed away on a Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, the 11th year of Hijrah. The 11th year of Hijrah on Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. The 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Of Rabi' al-Awwal. When the Sahaba, when the news broke out and he died in the middle of the day. He passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the middle of the day. When the Sahaba, the news spread out of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam between the Muhajireen, and between the Ansar, we only mentioned a few instances that took place with the Sahaba and a few things that took place with the Sahaba. But you need to understand that there's hundreds if not thousands of Sahaba who were living in Medina with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And for the first time in the reality or in the life of the Sahaba, for the first time there is no leader. And there is no one who is leading the Sahaba. And the importance of leadership and having a leader who is going to run the affairs of the Muslims, that's what pushed the Sahaba, whether the Muhajireen or the Ansar, to begin to discuss who is going to take control of the affairs of the Muslims after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this goes to show you the importance, goes to show you the importance of having a leader who leads the affairs of the Muslims. And having someone to whom the Muslims, to whom the Muslims follow. And they go after and they, 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 they accept the leadership. To show you the importance. The Sahaba, they lived in a time where their leader was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's all they lived and that's all they came to realize. But now that he has passed away, now they realize the importance of having a leader. And that now we need someone to take reign after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Ansar, who were the ones who lived in Medina before the Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina and they accepted Islam and they were called the Ansar because they gave victory to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when no one in Mecca and around Mecca would give him victory and would take him in. So they were called the Ansar and this is a great virtue for them. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He calls them the Ansar and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He called them the Ansar. So when they knew about this, they gathered and they started to discuss the issue of Khilafah. And Abu Bakr and Umar and Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah and the Muhajireen, they also gathered to discuss the issue of Khilafah, the issue of leadership, of who is going to take control of the matters of the Muslims after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See, it's not like a small company that the leader has left or the CEO has left. Here we are talking about a country. We are talking about lives. We are talking about very important issues that take place in the day-to-day -day life of the Muslims that need a leader, that need a leader to lead them and to take control of the issues. So when the Muhajireen, when they gathered together, and they started to discuss Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He says, let us go to our brothers of the Ansar, for verily they have right in this issue as we have right. Meaning that we can't just boycott them and put them out of the picture and give the Khilafah, give the allegiance, the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance to someone whom we choose and we leave the Ansar and we boycott them. And we don't include them in our shura and in our gathering. If we were to do this, 
this will only this will only create conflict and this will only create more calamities and more fitna that will enter upon the Muslims if we are to boycott a group and take the leadership to ourselves and take the leadership to ourselves and how close is yesterday and how close is today to yesterday when people boycott and people take the power for themselves you find that there is no barakah, there is never any barakah in it and there is never any mercy and rahmah in it so Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he understood this and he understood that there are two great people in Islam, in the Sahaba at that time, who are the Muhajireen and who are the Ansar. And if we want to have a strong leadership, a strong Imam that everyone agrees upon, then we both have to come to the understanding. So he said, Umar, let's go to our brothers, the Ansar, for verily they have a right in this issue that we want to discuss. So as they are going, and this whole incident is known throughout history as Saqif at Bani Sa'idah, which is a place is a tribe in the Ansar, is like you can say today, a place that the people sit in, which is called Saqifa. Saqifa is what? Is a roof. Saqifa at Bani Sa'idah is the place that the people from Bani Sa'idah used to sit in. That's where the Ansar were gathered. So they said, let's go to our brothers, the Ansar. As they are going there, they meet two brothers from the Ansar. So these two brothers from the Ansar, they say, where are you going? They said, we are going to our brothers in the Ansar. Do you know where they are? He said, why do you want to go to them? He said, we need to discuss this issue with them. The two from the Ansar, they said, go and choose your Khalifa by yourselves. It is better for you than to go to the Ansar. And they are from who? They are from the Ansar. They said, no. Abu Bakr said, no, we have to go to them and we have to sit with them. And we have to sit with them and discuss this issue. So now they reached to the group of Ansar and the group of Ansar are sitting around. And as the Muhajireen, they enter upon the Ansar, there is a man sitting with them who is covered, who is covered with a piece of cloth and he's sitting down and he's sitting in a way that he's covered, his whole body is covered. So they enter and this person or this Sahabi is Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, the leader of who? The leader of, or Sa'd ibn Ubadah. Sa'd ibn Ubadah, the leader of Al-Khazraj. The leader of Al-Khazraj, which is the two, one of the two tribes that were known amongst the Ansar. We have Al-Aws and we have Al-Khazraj. Al-Aws, they had the famous leader, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, radiyallahu anhum, the one who passed away shortly after the battle of Al-Khandaq. He passed away and upon his death, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, as narrated in the Hadith al-Sahih, that the throne of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la shook when Sa'd bin Mu'ad passed away. When Sa'd bin Mu'ad passed away, the throne of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la shook from his death. Sa'd bin Mu'ad, he was one of the great Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the leader of Al-Aws. He was the leader of the tribe Al-Aws. So Sa'ad bin Ubadah, he was in that gathering. So when they asked, who is that man who is covered? They said, it's Sa'ad bin Ubadah. They said, what is wrong with him? They said, he's, in a, he's not feeling well. He's sick. And the Ansar, they had already agreed, or they were already in agreement that they wanted to give bay'ah to who? To Sa'ad bin Ubadah. They wanted to give him bay'ah. And they were willing to give him bay'ah. And by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the muhajireen, they come and they enter upon the saqifa of Bani Sa'idah to interrupt and to join in the speech or to join in to the shura of who is going to take the affairs of the Muslims. So the speaker of the Ansar, he stood up and he began to speak after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَنَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ وَكَتِيبَةُ الْإِسْلَامِ We are the Ansar of Allah. We are the ones who gave victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are the first soldiers of Islam. And وَأَنْتُمْ يَا مَعْشَرَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ رَحْتُمْ مِنَّا And you, O people of the Muhajireen, you are a group of us. 
And a small group of you have come to us, meaning when they did hijrah to Medina. A small number, the number of muhajireen was smaller than the number of the Ansar. They want to take the leadership away from us. The speaker is speaking to, is saying this in front of the muhajireen. He says, and you came and you want to take this leadership from us. And Abu Bakr and Umar, they are sitting down and they are listening. So when he became quiet, Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, I wanted to get up and speak and I had prepared a speech. Umar radiallahu anhu, he had prepared something to say when they go to the house or when they go to the Ansar. He said, وَقَدْ زَوَّرْتُ And I prepared something that I'm going to say in the presence of the Ansar. He says, as I got up to speak, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, sit down. Abu Bakr he said, sit down now Umar. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he got up and he began to speak. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sended salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Abu Bakr, he started to speak. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, فَكَانَ هُوَ أَحْلَمُ مِنِّي وَأَوْقَرُ He says, Abu Bakr was more silent, was more quieter than me, was more patient, was more, gave more of a feeling of presence than Umar. And this was something that was known. Umar radiallahu anhu, even when they, as we mentioned, when the Prophet sallallahu he passed away, he's speaking, he's speaking. As soon as Abu Bakr, he spoke, the people turned to Abu Bakr. It's like the people, they're waiting for Abu Bakr to say something. They're waiting for him to speak. They're waiting for him to say something with, with regards to the issue or the matter at hand. He says that he did not leave a word that I had prepared except that he mentioned it and said it in a better manner than I had prepared it. He said every single word I wanted to say, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said it. And not only that, he said it in a better way than I had prepared it. He said it in a better way than I had prepared it. And from his, يعني, that was something that was done by Abu Bakr on the, يعني, at that time, at that moment. And when someone is, gets up and just speaks instantly without preparing something, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you need to understand that this is all from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had guided Abu Bakr to say these words and to do this. He says that everything you have mentioned about your virtues, about the virtues of, of the Ansar is in you and no one can take that away from you. And in some narrations, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu even started to mention the virtues of the Ansar in the Quran and the virtues of the Ansar in the Sunnah. And the greatness of the Ansar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that no one can take this away. No one can take this away from the Ansar. But this issue that you are talking about will only be known for the people of Quraysh. Full stop. No one can take it away from you, the virtues and the contributions that you have done. وَلَكِنْ لَنْ يُعْرَفَ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ إِلَّا لِهَذَا الْحَيْ مِنْ قريش. But this issue, this topic of Khilafah is only going to be known and is only going to be accepted by the Arabs and by the Muslims at that time from the people of Quraysh. Why? Because they are from the most respected tribes and their lineage is from the most respected of lineages. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions in many ahadith, as we'll come to see, that the Khilafah, the leadership is with Quraysh. The leadership is with Quraysh. The understanding of these ahadith, there's a lot of depth in them. Why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the ahadith are mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. And the ahadith are sahih. The hadith are correct and they are mentioned directly that the Prophet Sallallahu he mentions Quraysh and he mentions that the leaders are from Quraysh. So one of the, after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he speaks, a man gets up from the Ansar and he says, I have the best plan and the best way to perform this issue. He says, Minna Amir wa minkum Amir. 
He says, from us an Amir, and from you an Amir. And we'll have each of one from the Ansar, one from the Muhajirin. We'll have two Amirs. We'll have two Amirs. And logically, it is known that there can never be two leaders. There can only be one leader. That one leader can delegate many other uh, uh, leaderships to people, but there can only be one leader. There can only be one leader. He said, I have the greatest or the best plan. From you an Amir and from us an Amir. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he says that this can never be. The issue, this matter can only be from the people of Quraysh. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, he took my hand and he took the hand of Abu Ubaidah, Abu Bakr. He took the hand of Umar. And he took the hand of Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah and he said, give bay'ah, give pledge of allegiance to one of these two men. He said, give pledge of allegiance, give bay'ah to one of these two men. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he never wanted it for himself. He never wanted the khilafah, he never wanted the leadership for himself. And he mentions in his first khutbah, he says that this is something that never crossed my mind. I never wanted I never wished for it, I never asked for it once in my life. It was something that was given to me. It was something that was put on me. It is not something that I stood up and asked for. So in the beginning he said, Umar Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, choose one of them. Choose one of them to become Amir, to become the Khalifa. When he said that, Umar radiallahu anhu, he says that, I didn't disagree with Abu Bakr with everything he said until he said that. Until he mentioned my, me or Abu Ubaidah. He said, and for my neck to be cut off, for no sin, for nothing that I have committed is more beloved to me than take leadership in a people in which there is Abu Bakr. In which there is someone or in this, my neck to be cut off for no sin. For no reason is more beloved to me than to be a leader of a people in which there is Abu Bakr. There is no chance. There is no chance whatsoever that I will be a leader in a people that there is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And then the people started to speak and the voices started to get loud. And the confusion and the arguments are starting to begin. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, Abu Bakr, give me your hand. Abu Bakr puts out his hand. Umar takes the hand of Abu Bakr and he says, I have given bay'ah to Abu Bakr. And I pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr for him to be the Khalifa. As soon as he did that, Abu Ubaidah shook the hand, took the hand of Abu Bakr, I give you bay'ah. The Ansar, as soon as they did that, the Ansar got up and they gave bay'ah to Abu Bakr. And they put their hands in the hand of Abu Bakr and they gave him bay'ah, pledge of allegiance. Understanding, knowing that no one can compete, no one can come near Abu Bakr when it comes to these issues. No one can dare stand up and move forward and say that I want to be Khalifa instead of Abu Bakr. No one can say that. When Abu Bakr mentioned Umar and Abu Ubaidah, they started to argue. But as soon as Umar took the hand of Abu Bakr, as soon as Umar took his hand and said, the bay'ah is to you, everyone agreed that Abu Bakr is the Khalifa. And Abu Bakr is the only one amongst us who is worthy, whose virtues and whose status is worthy of him to be the Khalifa of the Muslimin. And this is what is known, this is what is known as the the specific pledge of allegiance that took place in the Saqifa of Bani Sa'idah, in the tribe in the house of Bani Sa'idah. So now we have the leaders of the Ansar and the main and the main Sahaba of the Muhajireen that have given bay'ah to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And people will come and now try. Zubair wasn't there. Ali radiallahu anhu wasn't there. Talha wasn't there. 
And it's not like the Sahaba, that, because they are all Muhajireen. It is not like some people they try to say, or misconcepts that people try to mention, which are the Shia. They try to say that they boycotted Ali radiallahu anhu, and they even mention as Zubair. They say, that how did they boycott Ali and how did they boycott as Zubair? Even as Zubair, he's one of the most hated Sahaba to them. But they still mention him and how did they boycott Ali and how did they boycott as Zubair? And Ali wasn't there, radiallahu anhu, and he wasn't there because Abu Bakr and Umar, they didn't want him to be there. This is all false, this is all lies. And no such thing has been mentioned upon Ali radiallahu anhu. And as we'll come to learn that when the general, when the public bay'ah was given, Ali radiallahu anhu was there. And he was the first one to stand up and to give bay'ah to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And he was the first one to take the hand of Abu Bakr. And he was the first one to say that as long as Abu Bakr is alive, then there is no one worthy of the Khilafah except for Abu Bakr. These are the true words of Ali radiallahu anhu. Not the lies that people spread that Ali radiallahu anhu, he hid something in his heart and he was secret, he was scared and he was all of this mis, uh, uh, misguided knowledge that they spread. Ali radiallahu anhu, he stood up and he gave bay'ah to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu the next day. The next day. But Ali radiallahu anhu, as we mentioned, that when the news came out of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali radiallahu anhu, he stayed in the house of Fatima and he didn't leave. And he didn't leave. And no one can understand the relationship between the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and between Ali radiallahu anhu is different to any of the Sahaba. Ali radiallahu anhu, he grew up in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the one who took care of Ali radiallahu anhu when Ali was young. That's why Ali radiallahu anhu, he was the first to accept Islam after Khadija, because he was in the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was living with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the husband to the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not any daughter, the most beloved of daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima radiallahu anha. And they tried to use this as an excuse for them to attack the great Sahabi Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and to take away from the virtues of Abu Bakr. But it is like the one who is trying to spit at the sun, but his spit does nothing but come back on his face. That's the only thing that they are doing when they speak about Abu Bakr. When they speak about Umar, when they speak about any Sahabi, any companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they speak about anyone in an ill way, they are doing nothing but harming themselves. We find that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the way that he spoke to the Ansar, and this is a manner of speaking that unfortunately amongst Muslims today is lost. Amongst the Muslims today, the first thing when a dispute or when an argument takes place, the first thing that happens is that the person mentions the faults or the wrong that the other one has done. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he used the other way or he did it the other way around to gain the acceptance, to get them closer to him. He mentioned their virtues. And he mentioned the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about them and that the Prophet sallallahu he mentioned about them. He didn't go and speak about their wrongs. He didn't go and speak and say that we are Quraysh, we are the leaders, we are the only ones. He mentioned the hadith, but he mentioned the hadith after he had spoken to them about the virtues. After he bring their hearts closer, then he mentioned. After he had captured their hearts and the, he had bring them, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, not once, as we mentioned during his speech, was his intention to have himself appointed as Khalifa. What Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wanted was for the truth and for that which is correct to take place. To that which pleases Allah 
into that which would please the Prophet sallallahu that was the intention of Abu Bakr. Never to call to himself. Never to call the people to appoint him as Khalifa. And then after he had brought them, he was able to what? He was able to give them the truth and they were able to accept the truth. And this is a way of speech. This is a way of, of, of debating with the person. If your intentions are sincere, you don't mention the faults. You mention the good, the virtues, what the person has done good. Not what the person has done bad. And not the wrong that the person has done. Because the more you mention it, the more the heart gets involved. The more the heart turns away. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was able to convince them. And he was able to bring them closer. Some of the things that the people tried to mention and historians tried to mention that Sa'ad bin Ubadah, he rejected the Khilafah of Abu Bakr and that he didn't accept the Khilafah of Abu Bakr. And this is a false claim and it's a false narration that is mentioned. And the narrator of this is known to be a liar in the books of history. For he mentions that Sa'ad bin Ubadah, he said that I'll never be with you except with my arrows, except until my arrows are in you, and except my, the blade of my spear is, is, uh, is wet with your blood. This is what they mentioned that Sa'ad bin Ubadah, he said. And I will never pray with you, and I will never accept the, what your judges judge, and I will never accept anything that your leaders say. And they say that Sa'ad bin Ubadah, he never prayed behind Abu Bakr. And he never prayed with the Muslimin. And this is all false. This is all false. This is all something that has been created as a lie. And has been spread amongst the people. That's why it is very important that the books of history, the books of history are not all accurate and are not all correct in that which they mention in the books of history. One of the greatest books of history and the earliest books of history, the book of Imam al-Tabari, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the famous Mufassir. He has a book of history. Tariq al-Muluk wal-Umam. In the beginning of his history, or in the beginning of his compilation of the history, up until his time, he mentions that, I have mentioned every piece of narration that has reached me. And I have mentioned it with the chain of narrators. So that the person who looks upon them is able to differentiate between that which is correct and that which is false or fabricated. So he cleared himself. He cleared himself by mentioning the chain of narrators. And the person who has knowledge in history, in historians, and has knowledge in the chain of narrations is able to differentiate between that which is false and that which is correct. It is not as simple as going to a book of history, reading a statement or reading a narration, and then putting or putting forward this narration and saying this is what took place. If we were to do that, then you will find that everything that we mentioned, there will be a conflicting narration that is contradictory to it. Like what we have mentioned now, that they say that Sa'ad bin Ubadah, he rejected the bay'ah of Abu Bakr and that he isolated himself from the Muslimin and that he turned away from the Muslimin. This goes against not only the narrations that mention that he did give bay'ah, this goes against the known character and personality of Sa'ad bin Ubadah during the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu He witnessed the battles of the Prophet sallallahu He witnessed Badr. He was from the people of Badr. He was the one who the Prophet sallallahu approached when they were fighting the battle of Al-Khandaq. He approached him and Sa'ad bin Mu'ad and he gave them a way for them to stop the war in which we give them a portion of the date trees. And we give them a portion of this. They said no. Sa'ad bin Ubadah and Sa'ad bin Mu'ad. They both said no. We will not give them any of our wealth as long as we are fighting with you. And his character was known in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. So to come and to say that he turned his back on the Muslims and he turned away from the Muslims, this goes against the character of Sa'ad bin Ubadah. Of Sa'ad bin Ubadah. 
There are many more lessons, lessons to be learned from the private bay'ah of Abu Bakr that we'll mention next week, inshallah, and we'll mention the general and the public bay'ah that took place, and we will confirm that Ali radiallahu anhu witnessed that bay'ah, and he was there, and what he even said when he gave the bay'ah to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And this is all mentioned in correct and sound narrations in the books of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah and in the books of history. And this is the truth of the matter. And then inshallah ta'ala we will mention the main events that took place in the time of the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Because even though his Khilafah was short, but his Khilafah set the principles and set the foundation for the Khalifas that came or the Amirs that came after him radiallahu anhu. <coughs> We'll stop here inshallah. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassabiquna assabiqun. Ulaika al-muqarrabun.